nine performance tuning questions answered in this video. Hi there, this is Pinal Dave, and I welcome all of you to this another sequel in the 60 second video. Please note that this video is going to be very different. This time, it's not gonna to be done in 60 seconds. We are going to answer nine of the most frequently asked questions related to performance tuning by all of you. If you are interested, continue. Where do you start to tune SQL Server? Like queries, indexes, what is your actual starting point? Very good question. I don't start with indexes or queries. I actually start tuning your server from server itself. First, we check your server properties. Right after that, we look at your database properties. After that, we start going down to other areas. I usually like to find the biggest bottleneck in very few moments first. So once we fix that, maybe we just don't have to go to query level. And for that, I use weight statistics. Once you run weight statistics script for your database, you can easily figure out what's going wrong or what's the biggest bottleneck for your SQL Server. Once you fix it, things is going to run fine most of the time. Let me ask the same question about query. Where do you start to tune SQL queries? Do you start from execution plan or anywhere else? So it seems like you really want to tune queries. Well, if you're talking about queries, I would never start from execution plan. Execution plan is one of the last thing I would take a look. I would start my journey about tuning queries with two important statistics. One of them is IO and second thing is time. Once you know which particular table or object is taking maximum IO, you can start focusing on that particular area and tune them. Also, you need to see how much time actually IO is taking. Sometimes query takes a lot of time to just display the result but it is actually completed very quickly. All this information you can get from IO. So I would start from statistics IO and time, not from execution plan. Let me rephrase. How to write efficient queries? All right, let's talk about queries then. So what do you mean by efficient queries? I mean, do you call efficient query a query which runs faster? Or do you call an efficient query for the query which takes least amount of IO? Sometimes you have a problem with your CPU. Do you call a query efficient if it uses less CPU? What's your actual pain point? That is what we first need to identify. Once you know what's your pain point, right after that, you can write query which is specific to optimize that particular bottleneck. That's called an efficient query. I often get this question when I go for performance tuning and for the same reason, I have created this simple challenge from you. You can see the video on the screen. Just go to that particular video and try to solve the challenge. You'll figure it out that it's not that simple to create efficient query. All right. You just mentioned about slow running query. How to identify slow running queries? It seems like you just want to tune queries. Well, let me answer this one question about queries. If you are calling a query slow, once again, we need to identify what particular resource is slow, CPU, IO, or time. And for the same reason, I have a script generated for you. In this script, you can find three different bottlenecks. You just have to change the order by, and based on what particular thing you want to tune, you can get all the slow queries for that particular resources. A common belief is that SQL Server execution plans are not easy to navigate. Is it true? Is it possible to search inside SQL Server Execution Plan? I know a lot of people don't like SQL Server Management Studio Execution Plan. Well, it's actually pretty good and decent. You just have to know what to do. You can definitely search inside your execution plan. Find any table or any particular operator or any operator which is expensive as well as can find queries which are using indexes or any query hand. Matter of the fact, you can also find operators which are taking a lot of CPU and memory. Well, all of this thing, you can easily do that if you know exactly what to do. And that's what I've included in the video, which is there on the screen. Understood. So we can search inside the execution plan. But what about sharing? 
Is it possible to share SQL Server execution plans with others? Of course, you can share execution plan, but you should definitely not share that in image format. Lot of customers of mine, as well as lots of user, sometimes just send this execution plan with a screenshot and ask me if there is any issue with the execution plan. Honestly, I can't figure it out when I just look at execution plan. I have to look deeper and for the same reason, you need to send me XML execution plan. If you send me XML execution plan, it contains every single information which I want to know as well as I can just open on my machine and also see all the execution plan related operator. Well, you can just attach execution plan in email and send me. All right, let us change the track of the conversation. Do queries run faster when we add more CPU? I actually like the change of topic. Let's talk about CPU. CPU is one of the biggest bottleneck and I often get email where users have CPU running constantly 100%. So the question is very valid. What happens if you add more CPU to a system which is already running 100%? Will it run faster or slower? Honestly, you can't say anything. I have lots of clients when they added more CPU to their system, the system actually degraded the performance. I can tell you one thing for sure that not every single query needs to use all the CPU. For that, there are two videos which I built. The very first video shows you that when I have 16 CPU, query does not run any faster. Matter of the fact, it just runs equally good on single CPU. There is second query which I built where I demonstrate that query is actually ignoring more CPU threads. Well, this can easily happen and in that scenario, your CPU is just being wasted. So it is very critical that you add right amount of the CPU and if you have lots of CPU, make sure that your max degree of parallelism is set to correct number or you will have performance issues. Now that we talked about CPU, let me ask one question about memory. How to detect memory pressure in SQL Server? I knew you would ask this question. When people start discussing about CPU, the next thing they want to discuss is about memory. Now, memory management as well as diagnosing the memory in your system is very complicated thing. However, in SQL Server, we have dynamic management views which tells us if we have memory pressure or not by just single indicator. I have created video which you can see over here. There are three different scripts and each of these scripts tell you that if you have memory pressure issue or not. Matter of the fact, one of them also predicts the future usage of SQL Server. Use this dynamic management view and quickly figure it out that if you have memory pressure issue or not. One final question. Can we tune our SQL Server ourselves? Of course, yes. You should not need any external consultant to tune your SQL Server. Your SQL Server is your baby. Your SQL Server is your expertise. Your SQL Server is something which you have built from ground up. Nobody knows how good or bad it runs. Nobody even understand the complexity of your queries as well as how you set up certain things in it. Only you can tune your SQL Server best. So I strongly recommend that before you go to any external consultant, first give it a shot yourself. Well, that's it for today. If you have any question which is not answered, please do not forget to comment with this video. I also suggest if you like this video, please share with your friends and do not forget to subscribe this channel.